Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk to you about ideal and real batteries. Our objectives are going to be to understand the properties of ideal and real batteries so that we can calculate the terminal voltage of a battery of some specified electromotive force, or EMF, and the internal resistance from which a known current is flowing, and to calculate the rate at which a battery is supplying energy to a circuit or is being charged up by a circuit. So let's start by taking a look at batteries. A cell or battery, which is a combination of cells, provides a potential difference. The potential difference from a battery is sometimes called an electromotive force, or EMF. Now note, it's not really a force in the physics terms. EMF is just a historical name we use for these. The EMF of a cell or battery is its maximum possible po potential difference. Now batteries are pumps for charge, raising charge from a lower potential to a higher potential in a circuit. So, ideal versus real batteries. Ideal batteries have no resistance. They're perfect. Their terminal voltage is exactly equal to their EMF. Real batteries, on the other hand, have some fixed amount of internal resistance. They're not a perfect conductor. They have a little bit of resistance in there, and because of that, the terminal voltage across a real battery is a little bit less than the battery's EMF. Now if we take a look here at an ideal battery, we've got the EMF in here, and we'll take a look at the terminal voltage, which is VB minus VA, and we'll put it in a circuit with some resistance, so we've got a current I flowing. Well, the voltage of our battery, oops, let's pick a different color here, the voltage of our battery is just going to be our change in potential from B to A, so that's VB minus VA, which in this case, because it's an ideal battery, the potential difference across our battery is going to be the EMF, E, which is equal to the terminal voltage. Perfect world. More realistic, however, is our real battery here, where we have some amount of internal resistance as part of the battery itself. So the voltage of our battery in this case, which is still delta V or VB minus VA, in this case is going to be V battery must be equal to I times R, the voltage drop across our resistor here. You can see the potential drop IR compared to VB minus VA must be the same. Therefore, if V battery is equal to IR, that's equal to our EMF minus current through our internal resistor, EMF minus the drop IRI, which is equal to the terminal voltage. So the terminal voltage in this case is going to be the EMF minus the voltage drop across the internal resistor. So we have a slightly lower terminal voltage than the EMF, the maximum potential of our battery. Let's see how this plays out as we look at a problem. The terminal voltage of a real battery is 15 volts. If the battery has an EMF of 18 volts and supplies 10 watts of power to resistor R, find the value of R and RI. Well, the way I'm going to solve this is I'm going to start with the VERP table, because really this is just a simple series circuit. So my circuit elements, I've got my internal resistance, Ri. I've got my resistor, capital R. And I'll make a row here for total. And I have my potential, my current, my resistance, and my power dissipated. And then we'll start by filling in the information that I already know. I know that we've got 18 volts here. That's got to be our total. I know that the voltage drop across R must be 15 volts because that's the terminal voltage right there, VB minus VA, if we labeled that B and that A. So that's going to be 15 volts. And since it's a series circuit, that means the voltage drop across RI then must be 3 volts. We also know we have 10 watts of power to resistor R. So there's 10 watts. Well, right away, anytime I know two things in a row, I can figure out the others. So power is V times I. So that means 
I must be power divided by voltage, which is going to be 10 watts over 15 ohms, or 0.67 amps. That means I must have 0.67 amps flowing through my circuit. Since it's a series circuit, we must have the same current everywhere in the circuit, 0.67. And now I can figure out the resistance, the internal resistance here, R equals V over I. That's going to be 3 over 0.67, or about 4.5 ohms. Capital R, V over I, 15 over 0.67, is going to give us a resistance of about 22 and a half ohms. And my total resistance, well, that's going to be V over I, or I could add up my individual resistors, because they're in series here, to come up with 27 ohms. And I can also fill in my powers here if I want to. Power equals V times I, which is going to be 2 watts here, and 18 times 0.67, that's going to be 12 watts here. So to answer the initial questions, find the value of R. Well, the value of R is 22.5 ohms, and RI, 4.5 ohms. Just a quick little question using the internal resistance of a real battery. Hopefully that gets you a good start with ideal and real batteries. If you need more help looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, and make it a great day.